right part three of the stream let's go for that retrofit yeah that's a good point adventure we might have been very tail light is that the right term opposite of tail heavy because the weight and balance of this thing by default is like this only the pilots in the flight engineer but no passengers if we add passengers that might make it more stable actually that's a good point so i wanted to try so we have different variants here right if we filter this with the yunkers we have this 1939 version with five liveries in total we have the floats with three liveries in total skis with three different colors from the floats one and the retrofit has three as well nice aviators club livery xbox aviators club nice okay but i'm pretty happy with the default one it looks the most classic to me so let's stick with that one and let's start where we ended off uh, does the ikea code of that one again lima foxtrot sierra bravo okay and uh, maybe we can start in the 91 parking slot 91 there or here 98 ga large yeah that sounds good 98 okay 98 it is uh lima foxtrot sierra bravo try and pronounce that for me 98 there you go see how powerful little nav map is it even he is able to see those parking spaces accurately in its map okay set that here start it off uh live weather yes live weather all that for 15 bucks yeah true it's really nice really nice i had my reservations about asobo aircraft before but yeah it's it's good fun it's perfect not too <clears throat> not too detailed but not too casual either uh, that nice level for fun Heard story about the spruce goose disney cartoon which referred to it ah okay it only flew once oh there it is the wikipedia okay let's go and check that out well that's loading up let's have a look at the spruce goose Flight deck of the H4. How many engines? Eight? Eight. Pratt and Whitney R4360. My goodness. The use H4 Hercules in terms of size, you can see. This, the yellow highlight there. Is it? Yeah, it's bigger than an A380. I think, if I read that correctly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Spruce, because it's entirely built of wood. Ah, wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, what we're flying today is it's just a tad, tad smaller here, right? Yonkers. U52. But yeah, they, it's nice. They, uh, there's a bit of history in here in the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums. I read this. It was nice. Shows where it came from, how it was used, and all that stuff. Pretty cool, actually. Nice that they added that, um, that GPS. Uh, no, that, not GPS. The, the history behind it. Sorry. Yeah. Here we are. Oh, yeah, definitely. Look, look at this, how different this is. Yeah, this is much more flyable. If you're starting off, this might be the better, um, the easier rather, the easier uh, place to start because you actually have V-speeds in here. V1, VR, what is VLOF? So it's the same. V1 and VR are the same, 120. That's kilometers per hour we're looking at here. V2 is 130, VCL, hmm, not sure of that. And then you have the V-speeds for retraction, 140, 
and then 150 and then you have approach uh, flap 0 flaps 10 140 130 okay kind of I kind of get it kilometers per hour even the the speed airspeed indicator looks different gyro increment what is that gyro slaving oh that might be what we were missing okay pretty cool looks so different than the one we were flying a while ago nice and that's yes that's 15 bucks this looks like a completely different plane oh my goodness much more modern definitely and here you would be able to fly a VOR definitely because you have that CDI here the altimeters are in feet now that's nice vertical speed is in feet per minute now okay yeah the the one the original one the 1939 is the original uh, as classic as authentic experience as possible this one is a lot more flyable although in terms of appearance i like the one the previous one much better really they because of the the wear and tear right this one is pretty looks perfect actually looks pristine looks something like for a simulator and then you ha even have this conversion feet to meters why would you need this if everything is already in feet here unless there is still something in meters yeah even the engine instrumentation is very nice lift off speed oh that's different from rotation yeah Maybe that's a few technical uh, differences. That's cheating. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yes. Very strange. Okay. Propeller. Once again. There's a propeller. Did they change it? Um, yeah, there is a propeller. In the original one, we were flying... There was no propeller lever. At least I didn't see it. The, the one here was the starter. Very cool. Well, that is interesting. Okay. And then you have the starter there. Yeah. Let's see if the checklist is different. Yes, it is. Compartment blower switches. It is different. Oh my goodness. It's like a completely different plane, guys. Wow. I did not expect it to be so different. I thought it would be like a reskin. Didn't think it would have a completely different avionics, completely different knobs, switches, and whatnot. Wow. Right, right. In China, they use metric. Yeah, and I, I would imagine they would need this if some of the instruments would still be in metric here also but yeah this plane i don't think this was built for china specifically so i'm not sure why they would need that well interesting this version has sold it to me yeah this is a lot more uh, um how do you say flyable i guess the, the other one was a bit more vintage right it gives you the feels this one if you really want to fly and go somewhere i think this is more functional Okay, so we turned on the blower and we hear the compartment, uh, the, the blower somewhere. It's nice. Okay, battery switches. Where's the battery? Batteries are here. My goodness. I like this. It's not too much of a classic, but it still has all those steam gauges, right? Hey, yeah, I'm starting to like this now. Okay. There's also a generator battery uh, selector, okay. Yeah, it's still using the battery. So I'm guessing later, once we have the engine on, we will switch to generator. Okay. Engine master switches on and closed. Yes, those are all on. There's even a guard here, so it can't accidentally turn it off. Throttle levers are idle. 
oil fuel supply levers are all off and yes everything is in english now yes <laughs> oh my goodness yes i like this i like this yeah i think it, this is a good starting point then once you're familiar with how the plane flies then you can fly the vintage one for even more feels parking brake set that on parking brake light oh there's even a light to show if the parking brake it is on or off this guy nice okay very cool pito heater let's check it out uh-huh we have even two of them we also have the warning light there yes they turn off uh one second yeah that's that pito warning light where is it oh yeah the annunciator the annunciation there the warning yes that's off and uh then we can turn that off too good did someone follow hey uh three string thank you for following turn that off then we get the warnings again and we get the warning right there it says pito okay looks good so that's working so with that we can turn off the battery again which is or the batteries there right and we check if our controls free and correct looking good <clears throat> Whoa, one second i said too far you yeah. left and right looks good okay free and correct um okay before starting carb heat cold where's the carb heat yet yeah, right here it's cold oh you crank it okay the carb heat is cranked okay i see yes battery switches i know where that is now these two i love it they even the the uh, electrical uh, connections in here right shows you how the electricity is being routed very nice radio master switch where is that over here set that to norm nav lights turn those on oh even the lights are here now not anymore at the back yeah radios oh yeah you have common nav radios okay let's leave that in adf it has adf what is rmi uh rmi is what rmi maybe this one oh it's it's the one which picks either if it's vor or adf so this one we're picking vor1 uh single needle must be set to adf and then double needle to vor okay i can go with that radio magnetic indicator one and two so something like that maybe okay hydraulic pump switch figured out the basics of little nav map that's great man yeah you'll, you'll get more used to it as uh, time goes by yeah, I'm very impressed, Adventure. I did not expect it to be this different. I'm glad we checked it out. Hydraulic pump switch on. There you go. You see that light? Hydraulic pressure should be minimum 655 PSI. There it is. Um, why is that so high, though? Well, I guess at minimum 655, so that red line. So it's good that it's full. It's in the green zone. Okay, good. Marking brake is set. Yes, we have that light. Door warning light is off. Uh, yeah, they don't have that. Why? Can you open the doors? One second. Can you open the doors? Let's try it. Ah, uh, I was hoping that you can open the doors here now. How about here? Can you... Does it still have that flickering wing thing? Oh, this one is actually better. You don't have the flickering wing problem, the flickering window problem. Looks like they put in a lot more time in here. And focus, which makes sense. I guess majority of the people will be flying this more. And then when they want the vintage feels, they'll switch to the other one. Okay, our warning is off. Fuel tank selector is in both. Yeah, that's still the same there. Fuel quantity. Oh, fuel quantity. Where is it now? It's still outside. Why? Why is it still outside? You did everything already. Oh my goodness. How can I see that? You guys read it. 
I, I can't read it. I cannot read it, my goodness. Uh, oil quantity. Oh yeah, that's the kind of dipstick kind of thing there. Which one is this again? This is the retrofit version of the Yonkers U52. Um, second. Just checking the oil there. Okay, good. Altimeter setting. I'll just press B. No, no. Let's 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 do it for real. Let us do it for real. Okay, altimeter is pretty standard. We have one there, two there. This is there a standby altimeter? I don't see it. But okay, so let's set one zero two one. I like that it actually has. I see this. So nice. You have a millibar and an inches of mercury already there. 1021, there you go. Almost at sea level in here. Okay, good. Very nice. 1021. I like that. Compasses slaved and checked. Does anyone know what the slaving means? Yeah, here, the gyro, gyro slaving. I. I'm not sure. I remember seeing that too in the DC6, but I didn't really explore that. Yeah, they are slaved. And the compasses are checked, are they? Where's the compass even? This one? Is it this one? Let's see what happens. If we free it or slave it. Does it mean just like synchronizing the left and right? I don't know. Hmm, maybe not. Anti-collision lights, let's turn that on. We're starting our engine now. There we go. Start the engine. Okay. Safety start guard is open. What is that here? Safety start switch is on. Fuel wobble pump. We still have this thing. There you go. Wobble it. Do you wobble it like that? Multiple times? I don't know. Or just once? Okay. <laughs> I'll be waiting, adventure. Yes, I'll be waiting. I'll be watching that stream for sure. Yes, we'll, we'll learn more about that. Okay, start. There you go. Prop RPM lever, minimum RPM. What is What do you call minimum RPM? Does it mean that one? Must be fully pulled. Okay, I see. Mixture lever engine idle cutoff uh, here. Yeah, that's cut off. Magneto switch engine is set to both. Might have pressed start there a bit ahead of time. Um, okay, I did it.
test. That should work. But if I use NVIDIA Broadcast, there we go. Yeah, okay. I think that works now, right? I think we're back. That should work now. All right. There we go. Thank you for letting me know. Airplane ASMR indeed. Oh, no. He's back. <laughs> Man, why, why, why is that happen? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Let's try it again. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, rich when engine fires. Ah, okay, okay. So because I have to set the mixture, yeah. It's just that I don't hear it. I don't hear the engine. So if... Oh, there it is. That work? There it is. There it is. Okay, good, good. That was a bit sketchy of a startup, but uh, okay, at least it worked. Good. Uh huh. Supply lever. Oh, now we switch it to run. Okay. There you go. And now we switch this to generator, the one at the back. Yeah, indeed, that's what I was looking for. So we switch this to gen. There we go. The amps. DC power changed, went higher. Throttle engine adjust to 600 RPM. Um, okay, let's just adjust that at just a bit. 600 RPM is like that. Still a bit quiet, isn't it? Very quiet and idle. Okay. Oil pressure engine 3, it's in the green, 40 PSI minimum, prop RPM is max RPM now, okay, there we go, okay, good. Now we are setting that to 1100 RPM, very different startup sequence, that is very interesting actually. Should hear it more now. There it is. I'm thinking maybe we should have pushed back first, huh? Because we are kind of facing the building here. Ah, let's worry about that later. <laughs> let's worry about that later. Okay. Start engine one. Uh, let me try and see if I can remember this. Put this to start. Like so. Minimum RPM, so uh, RPM is fully pulled. Idle cutoff, uh huh, put that there. Idle cutoff. Magneto switch would be, let's hide this yoke, would be on both over here. There you go. And then we'll crank it, put it in the start position, and then I want to be ready when that happens. I want to look outside, one second, turn on the controller. Yeah, I know, right? What could go wrong? Over here. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. I doubt there's, there would be any smoke here, but yeah, just to be on the safe side. There we go. Oh, there's nothing. Did it start? Did we start it? Yeah, I think it is starting. Here it is. Yeah, the startup sequence isn't the best, I think. It's a bit um, not too believable. But it's okay. Not the biggest thing. Switch this to generator as well. There we go. Nice. And now we move this to the run position. There we go. Adjust it to 600 RPM. There we go. Well, pressure is good. Yeah. Prop RPM max it out here. Nice. And then we move to 1100 RPM on the throttle here. Now the manifold pressure here makes sense to me. Inches of mercury. Yeah, I think this plane is amazingly done. This retrofit very much uh, in line with the 
current standards of planes, right? The unit of measure, the things that we do. Very nice. Okay, now we can close the wobble pump, lock it in. But now for starting engine 2, we would need the fuel pump. Okay, so that's still the same. Okay, that's good. Hey, Rohan. Just a tad late. How are you, man? Put it in the start position. DC bus to current. That's new. Supplied. Okay, well, where is that? Ah, yeah. So we see that we have um, amp amperage in the DC the bus 2 here. Yes. Supplied. Electrical power must be supplied to DC bus 2. We do have it. Um, hey, thanks for the follow, Arika. Welcome to the channel. Fuel pump. Hope you're enjoying the chill vibes. Uh, fuel pump. Where's that thing? Oh, there it is. It's hiding. Hiding right there. There we go. Fuel pump. Minimum RPM, yes. Idle cutoff for engine 2, yes. Magnetos, let's go to both. Yes. And then let's move that to the start position. Oh, I forgot to set the mixture to idle. But that's okay, that works anyway. Okay, good. Even skip that part. Wheel pump can now go off. There you go. Fuel supply would be on run. 600 RPM. Lots of steps. I take back what I said about the uh, not detailed system. It's actually very nicely done. Goodness, the details here are amazing. All pressure for engine 2 is in the green as well. There we go. Thank you. AJ, 39 months. Goodness. How are you doing, man? Thanks for that. GG. Full RPM. And let's also sync that in here. Right. And then let's go to 1,100 RPM. For all of them now. There you go. Somewhere like that. so confused right and with that we can now actually turn off the safety start switch and the cover and the annunciator panel should be clear well we still have the pito but we'll turn that on later i imagine morning lights on the electrical panel no amber yeah no amber looks good nice Ammeter and voltage. Uh, check that ammeter is a value greater than negative one. Yes, both of them. And the voltmeter shows more than uh, at least 24.5. Uh, 22. No, 10. yeah, it's 24.5. That looks good. Hydraulic pressure around 1000 psi. Uh, yes, we are good there. Door warning light is off. Yes, th there's no warning there. And an unseater panel. Let's test it. Just to see that all the lights are working. Yes, it is. The door is not. The door is in up, I think. Good. Now we can taxi. Phew. So we can probably do a bit of a pattern before we have to go out. Before we have to end the stream. <laughs> Alright. Let's go to idle here. Should have done this beforehand. Doing the pushback. looking good there nice runway is that way direct 180 okay we're back okay good good taxi lights on where are the taxi lights now where's the new taxi light here okay Inlet oil temperature greater than 40 before uh, increasing power. Well, uh, engine 2 is still a bit cold. I like that they have that level of um, that level of detail in there. It actually heats up bit by bit. Get it up to speed here. Nice. 
There you go. Start turning. That should be good. Let's skip the run up. Flap trim selector pulled up. Here we go again with the flap selector, guys. It's a very weird thing. Just going to cross the ground here to save on time. So I still don't know how to taxi here with this plane. There's the runway straight ahead. Doing my best impression of an S turn. Okay, we'll hold short here before we enter the runway. Because we have some things we still need to do. Good. Good. Right, let's see. Flight control set for takeoff. The flaps. Uh, where is that? Still here. Okay, that one they, they, they retained. This guy, okay, they still retain that guy, so I can actually set flaps for takeoff, right? And then uh, elevator trim would be 1.8, so somewhere like that. Inlet all temperature would be checked. Uh, still cold there, actually. Might regret that. Magnetos to both. They are all on both. Mixture levels are, levers are reach. Yeah, pito heat, that's one we have not turned on yet. There we go. Fuel pressure is low, but that's because we have low RPM. Squawk. Set that. Altitude reporting. Set the strobes to on. There. And then turn on the landing lights as well. There we go. Very nice, actually. Very nice. Love it. Turn off the taxi lights here. Okay, off we go. Let's have a look at the checklist if there's any more guidance. Uh huh. It's basically the same. Yeah, basically the same checklist from here. So what we can do is rely on this one. Uh, 120 kilometers per hour is our VR rotation speed. 120. And then uh, V2, okay, climb 140, okay. Release the parking brakes, let's try this out. Runway 33 should be what we see there, yeah, indeed. Set the heading bug there. Good, that's runway 33. As we get more in here, that fuel pressure should disappear. There we go, no more warnings, nice. And uh, I did want to set the VOR just so we can test how it works. 117 decimal 45. Maybe now is not the best time to do it. 117. One second. Active frequency 117 45. There we go. Is it alive? There's the VOR. The VOR is alive. Is there a DME indicator? Uh, oh, we have maximum flat speed limits actually. Nice. It's also interesting that this is shown in kilometers per hour, right? Okay, good. This thing doesn't want to turn. It's 11 now. Goodness. Time flies. Still maybe a quick pattern in the, in the stream. Alright, so the VORs there. This one is for ADF probably. This needle. Okay, good. So we put push forward. 1600. Classic XL. Mm, probably yes because of the interior pack 1600 there it is stable temperatures I'm hoping they're good full power takeoff power is set push forward on the yoke a bit there we go just to lift off the tail 
Control it, control it. 120 knots? No, oh, it, it took off way earlier than that. 120 kilometers? No. Yeah, it's way, way faster than that. Maybe because we're light. We don't have passengers. Okay, that, that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, move the flaps up. I really like this. Yeah, this is something that I think I will be flying more often. How about the hydraulic pump? Does that need to be turned on? There's a, a yellow light there. I'm not sure if that should be expected. But it does seem correct to have the hydraulic pumps on, right? Maybe. Carb heat green sector. Where is that? Green sector? Oh, because there's a carb temperature there, I see. So when you're descending, probably. Even after takeoff, you have to set that up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Look at the different trees here, guys. Very nice. Is it autumn already? Yeah, it looks like the... The seasons is taking place now. Slip indicator, there it is, yeah, that's working. Artificial horizon is there. Vertical speeds are working. Yeah, that was, that was, this feels more like an aircraft that we're familiar with. You can never tell the takeoff speed at which it works, yeah. True, true. There's also, oh, there is Adversio. If you look at the slip indicator, if I turn the left, there it is, you see the ball going out, so we have to step on the ball whenever we do the abrupt turn. Very nice. Very nice. Lower, lower, exactly. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay, let's let's see how we set up for landing here. Uh, 140. Okay, so we're too fast. I'm going to pull back here. We definitely need a lot more experimenting with this plane. Yeah, but it, it actually changes now because look at this. We this this retrofit version. And that now has a constant speed propeller, which makes it so different. My goodness, this is a totally different plane from the previous one we flew. That is amazing. Okay, we are at 140 knots. Is that 140? No, not, not kilometers per hour, sorry. Uh, 150, okay, 140 is there, 30, 20, okay, good. A bit too slow here. V speeds. Uh, let's go for a safe extension speed here. One seventy, one sixty, one fifty would be the flap speed limit. Okay, one seventy, one sixty, one fifty. So we are safe to extend our flaps already. Right, and all these, uh, all the way till landing actually. Go one more notch here my controller and then our approach speed at uh, flaps 40 would be 130 knots we are way slower than that way slower so I have to actually get more power in 130 knots huh interesting okay 10 20 30 <laughs> yeah, that always catches some people off the controller turning off, my controller turning off. Looking good. I can take that. Alright, let's turn here. Very nice. Yeah, 
everything set, lights and everything. Yeah, a bit slow. 130 knots, okay. Yeah, feels very good. Although, crap, we are very high again. We can make it up, no problem. There we go. There's even a prop sink here, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure that's what it says. Maybe that's for a different purpose. But yeah, definitely plenty of explore in this retrofit plane. Very nicely done, Sobo. Amazing stuff. I was impressed enough with the vintage version, but here even more so because the systems look even more developed in this one. My goodness. That previous one, the 1939 version, was perfect for the classic vibes. This one is perfect for the classic vibes with a bit of modern touch for conventional navigation. Conventional but not uh, too old school navigation. Trimming it up, trimming it up. Should be okay. Right there. Bit of crosswind coming from the left. Apply a little bit of left rudder. Not center line. That's okay. Let's just. Whoa! A bit more bouncy than I hope. There we go. Keep it idle. Still pretty fidgety with the taxing, I still haven't gotten it. Very weird. There we go, there's the tail landing as well. It actually behaves. Maybe I did it better this time. Let's make the next one. Good. I like it. Streams extended. Gumps, too late. <laughs> No, the, everything else is the same, yeah, because we are mainly doing the pattern. So the gas, the undercarriage, the, it has a fixed landing gear, right? Make sure we didn't touch, props we didn't touch, switches we didn't touch. It's mainly the flaps and the approach speeds that we needed to concern ourselves with. Dragging his tail. <laughs> Mucho butter. I'll take it, I'll take it. Definitely plenty of things to learn, but man, I am impressed. 15 USD, guys. This is what we get. Like, it's like two completely different planes with full on systems. Wow, <laughs> I like the sound of that. And granted, there are a few quirks, right? Some known issues, some maybe the, the startup procedure isn't the most uh, uh, fulfilling of uh, most. Uh, accelerating you don't hear that that start of the catch of the engine maybe the sounds aren't as boomish in the startup in idle but uh, overall i'm really liking it yeah I'm, I'm i am amazed i did not expect it to be this level i would be happy enough paying 15 usd for the 1939 version but this one, in addition, feels completely different, right? The switches, the, everything is different. It's like the core is there, but it's a different plane altogether. I was honestly expecting when I was loading in the retrofit this version, I was expecting it to have like maybe just these parts updated, right? Just more modern avionics, more modern instruments with the unit of measure difference but they didn't expect like a full-blown battery system and the, the the buses and whatnot so it looks like the entire electrical system got also uh, revamped or overhauled goodness so yes well done asobo turn off the landing lights turn on the taxi lights over there <laughs> pretty nice for a 15 uh, that's a very good point of view hey ready thanks for joining we're just uh, cooling down ending the stream glad you still made it that's a very good point of view Alex oftentimes for trucks we pay 20 USD 
Right? This one you pay 15, 1, 5 USD. And you get so much for it. Amazing. Yeah, I would like to, but uh, yeah, we don't have time anymore. Actually, I'm extending. So, uh, yes, we'll have to edit here. The other ones, let me know. There's still a float and a ski version. I'm expecting they're very similar to one of the versions that we checked out, either the 1939 or the retrofit. I'm assuming it's closer to the retrofit. But if you guys get a chance, let me know. It kind of makes sense that they're closer to the retrofit. Since they are more modern, I guess, with the seaplane variant and the, the ski variant. this is very nice indeed oh my goodness yeah and no gps still no gps so still conventional navigation just not uh, is it's the proper classic level to me where you can navigate because with the vintage one it's mostly for sightseeing i would say also the physics on this one seems better when i tap on the brakes the the tail doesn't just go like that so i think even the flight model is better on this retrofit one looks like they really put in a lot of work on this specific model look at how that moves looks so nice don't even know what it's called the center of the propeller have you flown anything with floats yet i have flown one before um, it was not the best experience because the floats were not uh, well implemented yet in the beginning, I think. Like the water rudder wasn't working. But I'm not sure how it is, how it looks now. If you can now steer with the water rudder deployed. That looks good to me. Yeah, let's call it there. Move to idle. I wonder how the shutdown sequence is for this one. If there's if it's any different. Parking brake. Uh-huh. Parking. Okay. Set. Turn off the taxi lights. Nav lights turn off as well. Beacons we keep that on until we turn off the engine. I think it's mostly the same. Mixture cut off for engine two and three. There we go. Very nice. Cut off the fuel as well. And now that we are getting more familiar with this plane, I can turn off the tooltips again. They really kind of break immersion for me, but they are a necessary evil in this case when you don't know anything about the plane and there's no manual. That's, all, that's my only gripe, I guess, with this plane. That there is no manual. There we go. Strobes off, uh, beacons should be off as well. And uh, how do you shut things off? You turn off the radio master switch. Um, hmm. Exterior lights, emergency switches, battery switches. There we go. <laughs> Good enough. A pick with floats, yes. That was the default uh, 172 with floats with the update pretty okay but i i guess there will be more simulation elements that aren't there yet cool but yes let's end the stream there thank you guys for hanging out with me so happy with this plane glad i bought it you guys enjoyed as well great job on an unfamiliar plane well we didn't crash so i'll take it <laughs> thank you have a good one guys Thanks for the company as always and thank you for the inputs. Always uh, invaluable learning together like this. Thanks, have a nice day. Clumsy flying and catch you guys on Friday for some DD60 with interior goodness. Thanks Mechanical, appreciate it. Alex, Jay, Rohan and everyone else in the stream adventure and everyone else who might be watching still. Thanks, bye-bye. Clumsy flying. Thank you.